If you like to make your NFL games a little bit more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast. We are presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, and we are going to be betting on NFL regular season games one week from today. Now, here's what we do today, right? We're going to recap what we saw preseason week three, any preseason in general takeaways from our guy, Steve Fezzik. Then we're going to do our official season win total bets. Now, those of you that smartly listen or watch us, youtube.com, Slash Ross Tucker NFL year round. No, we've already done the season win totals twice. We do them right when they come out because that's when there's value. We do them again in early summer because there's probably nothing else to talk about. And then we do them now because it's a good time to do them. But as Steve will, I'm sure, say, you know, the numbers are not quite where we would want them to be in terms of getting value like they were earlier in the offseason. The Steve I'm referring to is the legendary Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports, the only two-time winner of the Super Contest at the Westgate. We've been doing this for 10 years now. I think it might be the number one betting podcast. If it's not, let me know which one's better. I'd love to listen and see what's so great about it. Patreon.com slash RT Media. You legitimately should all sign up for patreon.com slash RT Media today because then for $10 a month, you get access to our private Slack channel where our Australian sensation grades post the immaculate Excel spreadsheet of all of our bets every week, our official bets, so you don't have to spend any time writing anything down for 10 bucks a month for what, five months, maybe six Seems pretty worth it to me. Patreon.com slash RT Media. Should probably introduce myself. We get new listeners every episode, every year. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, long time ago. And now I'm a broadcaster. So Saturday, primetime, on your television, UCLA at Hawaii, 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, on CBS, which yes, means as we record this on a Tuesday, I will be flying to Honolulu tomorrow. Should be noted, by the way, we're going to try every week to post, to, 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 to have this show stream live. So I think that goes on Twitter, on YouTube live. I got to ask Jack, our producer, I don't know if it goes on Instagram or TikTok live. Jack, text me during the show and let me know where else people can watch the show live on social media. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. And Steve, by the way, before we get into your preseason week three takeaways or the season win total bets today, we had a celebrity sighting on Saturday. Uh, evidently a big fan of the show, Justin Biter, B-E-I-T-E-R. He works in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania was covering my alma mater while missing against Southern Columbia. He spotted Paul Roberts on the sideline, Steve, and said, is, is your name Paul? And Paul said, yeah. He said, I'm Justin. I'm a big fan of the Even Money podcast. So not even me or you, Steve. Paul, who comes on the show once or twice a year, got, got, got a celeb sighting. What do you think of that? I love it. The Dread Pirate Roberts, undisclosed in most locations, but identified in Pennsylvania, does a great job promoting high school sports of all kinds, including football. Love, Paul. Um, back channel, he worked with me. Uh, we had a little betting syndicate, and then his limits got reduced. And so now he's on his own, pillaging and plundering. You know what? Oh, it streams on Facebook as well, not on TikTok, not on IG. So you can stream this show live. We'll typically be recording around somewhere between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. Eastern Time on Tuesdays for you guys that want to try to stream it live. All right. So preseason week three takeaways, Steve. 
Um, what, what were they? What do you got for me? You know, I think there's been a fundamental shift in preseason with only three weeks instead of four weeks. My number one takeaway next year that I'm going to use, these teams, they haven't been scoring, and they wanted to be able to have some successful drives. So what I saw was a focus on the offense early in the game. 12 of the 16 games went over in the first half. Second half, mixed bag, 50-50 over under. So uh, if you just blindly played the overs this final week in the first half, you cash 75%. So a little bit of a more of a reaction. The marketplace totals came lower after all these games went under in the first two weeks. But uh, last week, teams did want to have at least a successful first drive to start the game. Ooh, um, that's that's interesting. But how do you, I mean, that's just one week. How do you, I mean, you're really going to use that one week and bet first half overs week three preseason next year? Let me pull back the curtain a little bit. Not only did they go 12 and four, but the sharp betting market absolutely embraced all of them. So it wasn't unusual. We'd see a first half total was 17 and a half and then it closed 20. So almost, I would say over half of those first half overs got hit by the pro bettors. So they're kind of tipping their hand, telling you what they like to bet week three preseason. Speaking of week three preseason, Steve, I guess I'm curious in general, okay, how much of an impact does the preseason have on like week one betting lines? Almost none. The only exception is quarterback uncertainty. And by quarterback uncertainty, of course, we have the rookie quarterbacks, but we also have quarterbacks changing teams. Now, Kirk Cousins, Atlanta, we haven't seen anything, so we can't really do any evaluation. It's been rough for the Pittsburgh Steelers, though, and their quarterback play. So because of that, We've seen movement on Atlanta week one from up from minus two to minus three. So quarterback play is pretty much the number one adjustment. Well, and th- and you kind of made an adjustment on the Broncos because of that, right? Spot on. So Broncos didn't have a quarterback a month ago. Now it looks like in Bo Nix we trust and money's been coming. In fact, I only like to play unders and season wins. We'll get to those, but the Broncos over five and a half came darn close, and they just barely rejected it. Um, all right, so then let's get into that in terms of the season win total bets. Unless you have anything else. Anything else on Cincinnati, New England week one? Just the parody in the NFL. You know, NFL Survivor Contest is coming, and it's going to be very interesting week one because there's only one clear-cut favorite. So it looks like a whole lot of parody in the NFL – We're seeing the dogs being embraced, lines dropping. Um, Jets were getting six against San Francisco. They're down to four. We're seeing other lines dropping. But, Ross, the New England Patriots line is not dropping against the Bengals. That has been going up all summer. It looks like a long, long year for the New England Patriots that seem, appear to be clear-cut, the worst team in the NFL, and I agree. Wow. Wow. I mean, there's a lot there. It's wild to me. We'll see who they end up starting at quarterback. It's hilarious that they want to start Drake May, but they actually think that the offensive line is too bad to put him in there. What, what an indictment of so many people. <laughs> you really think, like, play the logic there. It's bad. All right. What about season win total bets at this point, Steve? We'll go through them pretty quickly. But at this point... The uh, the haze in the barn, so to speak. Now, listen, I mean, there will be final cuts later today, and there will be some mainly bottom of the roster tinkering for the most part. Probably not guys that would actually move markets, but your thoughts in general on the season win totals at this point? So I only look typically to play unders. And why is that the case? Well, every team plays 17 games. So their season win, the average season win number should be eight and a half, right? 17 divided by two. However, teams can tie and overtimes only last 10 minutes. And so usually you would expect typical season to be one or two ties. So the average shouldn't be 8.5. It should be 8.4. I just plugged in all the numbers at some major books and the average is more like 8.57. Now that sounds trivial, 8.57 versus 8.4, but it turns out Every half game is worth about 50 cents, just under 50 cents of vigorish. So long story short, if you 
just bet every team to go under at a book, you would do just fine. You would break even or make a little bit of money across the board. How can that possibly be? Because of the enthusiasm. Teams want to bet. People want to bet on their teams. They want to bet overs. And because of that, there's a tax associated with the overs. So when I reach into an urn that has more white marbles than black marbles, I want to bet on the white marbles coming out. And because of that, I'm selectively playing unders, and I have four of them today. Wow. Okay, good. Well, let's, uh, let's dive into them then momentarily. But first, you know what everybody should be diving into, Steve? WestShoreHome.com slash Ross. Anybody that listens to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, you know I've already had two showers done in my house. I've had my entry door done by these guys. I cannot possibly highly recommend them enough. If you've ever thought about redoing your bathroom, and I know you all have because you look at it, you're like, ugh, these are the guys. They do full bath remodels now in two or three days. You just want to take the tub out, the old tub out, put the shower in like I did. You can do that. It's amazing. My daughters think I'm a hero for getting them this brand new, beautiful shower. I didn't realize, by the way, how much just a brand new entry door the return on investment, if you ever want to sell your house, that entry door matters. My listeners can get free installation with 48 months, 0% interest, plus an extra 500 bucks off. Just visit westshorehome.com slash Ross to redeem. That's westshorehome.com slash Ross. And then after you do, celebrate with some Smirnoff Vodka. It's the world's number one vodka, an official vodka partner of the NFL, it's been around since 1864. Grab a bottle of Smirnoff at your local retailer and head to Smirnoff.com to find recipes of delicious cocktails. Perfect for game day. Please drink responsibly. Smirnoff number 21 vodka. Distilled from grain, 40% alcohol by volume. The Smirnoff Company, New York, New York. Please do not share with anyone under legal drinking age. We start, Steve, with the Chiefs. We're not going to spend a ton of time on every one other than the ones where you actually have bets. But... We either take the over, the under, or we say no play. Chiefs are at 11 and a half, Steve. Yeah, Chiefs got sent a message last year. They don't need home field advantage to win the Super Bowl. A little complacency. Kelsey's a superstar. I could only look under. I hate betting against God at quarterback in Mahomes, but lean under. I've got nothing there. I I would, I guess I would lean over, but I got nothing. That's the right number. What about the Niners at 11 and a half, Steve? Absolutely. This is the first of four plays. Niners under 11 and a half minus 145. Warren Sharp talks about how the NFL does the Niners no favors in terms of the scheduling. Tough schedule, tough situation with not as much rest as their opponents. Don't like the Ayuk situation uh, and a lot of tear, wear and tear on the tires. Rough playoff run. Um, C-Mac getting banged up throughout the playoffs under 11 and a half. Wow. Under 11 and a half on the Niners. I, I can't do it. They're too good. I'm not doing it. I got no play there. What about the next one? Steelers. Their over under is eight and a half, Steve. How are the Steelers going to win nine games? Well, they do every year, apparently under Tomlin, right? But, um, I don't like either one of their quarterbacks. Uh, I don't like anything about the Steelers. Warren banged up. They're better of their two running backs, so Najee's going to have to carry the load early. Uh, Steelers are going to go 7 and 10. We're going to go under 8.5, minus the 145 Steelers. Wow. Um, I can't do that either, Steve. You're you're making some bold moves. I can't can't pick the under 8.5 for them. I don't know. They're going to have Fields end up being the quarterback. He's going to run all over the place in that <laughs> Arthur Smith offense. They're going to somehow go 9-8. and eight. I'm telling well, you, Ross, going they invented the forward pass in 1904, and that really hurt Fields' um, ability to compare it to other starting NFL quarterbacks. Oh, tell me about it. I, I would have played 15 years and been a Hall of Famer if they never did that. <laughs> I was much better as a run blocker. Okay, <laughs> what about the Ravens? Ravens are interesting to me, Steve. Over under 10.5 on the Baltimore Ravens. So sometimes you have to let it go. The Ravens were as high as 11 and a half early in the year, and I can see them winning 11 games. Yeah, at 10 and a half, I'd I'd even lean over. So 
So I will lean under here. At 11, I loved the under 11 and a half on the Ravens. Now, I was dead wrong on the Ravens last year, and I admit that. Um, I thought they'd win nine games. They were awesome. They have, they're breaking in three new starters on the O-line. You know, I don't know if they have, you know, losing Clowney, I thought, hurt a lot. Losing their D coordinator, I think, hurt a lot. I could only look under for the Baltimore. That division, Browns and Bengals, uh, I can only look under the 10 and a half for the Ravens. What about the Lions? Steve, they're at 10 and a half. Looks spot on to me. Lions are a team on the come, but um, you're paying the tax associated with them. I pass. I will agree with that. Ten and a half feels like the right number to me. That's another tough division there. I mean, Packers are legit. I think the Bears are going to be pretty good. So I think ten and a half is the right number. What about your Broncos? That number is five and a half. Has it moved, Steve? Have you changed your opinion? I have changed. I liked under earlier in the year. Now, absolutely, I'm a believer in Bo Nix. I know he's playing against vanilla defenses. I know he's only throwing the ball four yards downfield. Don't care. Certainly looks like he's got the acumen, and we know he's going to be a guy that's studying the playbook all year long. Strong lean over on the Broncos. Wow. Okay, but not a play. Not a play. All right. What about the Packers? Nine and a half. That feels a little light for the Packers with the way they finished last year. It does feel light to me. Strong lean to the over. You can see, Ross, I just don't like making official plays on overs, and the reason being Every year I do this, and I add up how my bets do, and I just crush it on unders. I go, I, I, I go through my betting slips, and I'm, it's always like 11, 3, and 5. That's ridiculous. More like 11, 5, and 3. Um, and then on my overs, despite having great closing line value, I break even. So I just don't make money playing overs. So uh, just a lean to the over on Green Bay. I would have a, a lean to the over on Green Bay as well. Um what about Jacksonville at eight and a half, Steve? So I've changed my opinion, and maybe I shouldn't do this because I had no opinion early in the year, so I guess how could I change it? I'm a little bit leaning over. Jacksonville has looked so good in the preseason, and maybe it's fool's gold, but maybe, you know, go back there, eight and three last year. Lawrence got banged up. Uh, if I had to play it, I'd play over. That number seems right to me. I think they're an eight or nine win team. I, I really do. Uh, what about the Buffalo Bills at nine and a half? You know, Buffalo under 10 and a half, spot on was a play. Uh, really asking Josh Allen to do everything now for the offense. It looks like they're a team that the window is slamming shut despite having the franchise quarterback, but I can't do it at nine and a half. I pass. I would only lean over on the nine and a half, and I would have leaned under on the ten and a half, right? I think ten and seven, probably the most likely scenario. But as you'll hear throughout the show, I think the Dolphins are pretty good. I think the Jets are pretty good. So uh, nine and a half feels about right. Commanders at six and a half is an interesting one, Steve. Yeah, so there's a team similar to Denver. I was looking to play under big time. And now they're getting better play than expected out of the rookie quarterback. So now I'm pretty neutral on Washington. One thing that's interesting about that division, it's one of those rare divisions where it's either going to be Washington or it's going, it's either going to be Philly likely, or maybe Dallas. I really think the Giants and Washington, you know, just cannot contend for the division, but I pass on the six and a half. I think that's the right number, but I keep telling these radio stations when they ask for my surprise team, I give them Washington. Hmm. The Bucks are at seven and a half, Steve. Interesting. When will the Bucks wide receivers get old? Um, sure seems like things have um the Bucks have been relatively healthy at the at the skill position players versus expectation. Uh Mike Evans keeps rolling along. I got nothing on the Bucks, so I pass. Seems like the right number to me. I think the Falcons are the class of that division. And that's a good point you make about Mike Evans and Godwin. At some point, those guys aren't going to be the same players. The Eagles, the team I do the preseason games for, they're at 10 and a half, Steve. Yeah, I hate to be a square ball and get to it late, but fly, Eagles, fly. All this optimism, I could only go over. I think it was an aberration that collapsed at the end of last year. Eagles are an 11-win team. I would look over. I would, I would lean over as well. I think the Cowboys take a step back, and I think the Eagles made serious upgrades at both coordinator positions, which is huge. 
I think that's the biggest reason why they dropped off. Seahawks are seven and a half, Steve? Yeah, I'd only look over. Uh, it sure feels like the Seahawks are an average team. And why is an average team lined at seven and a half, Ross? This is one that stands out to me. As, I'm surprised it's that low. I lean over. That feels about right to me. I've got some concerns about their O-line and their defense. Now their best pass rusher, Nuosu, is out for at least the first four games. That's not good at all. In a preseason game, he got hurt. Giants, six and a half, Steve, just like the Commanders. Wow, the Giants stink, Ross. I could only look under. I almost made them a play. Um, I, think, I think they've been fortunate to win as many games as they have in prior years. Now I know Daniel Jones, you know, has been injured, but he could get injured again. I could only look under. I can only look Steve for Omaha stakes. So excited about Omaha stakes this weekend. Look, it's Labor Day weekend. We got to go to Omaha stakes, the world's best beef naturally aged for the ultimate in tenderness, juiciness, and flavor. Save 50% off site-wide during their Labor Day sale. Order now, get an extra $20 off, which is awesome. Whether you're having a Labor Day cookout or getting fired up or tailgating, savor summer with 50% off site-wide during Omaha Steaks Labor Day sale. Shop today at omahasteaks.com and get an extra $20 off when you use my promo code at checkout. Plus, every purchase is backed by their unconditional money-back guarantee. I'm trying to look and make sure I know what the promo code is. I don't have it. Well, I'll tell you about the promo code next week. <laughs> OmahaStakes.com. Hey, you don't need a promo code for Labatt Blue, Steve. You just go ahead and drink some Labatt Blue lights with your friends Live life to the power of we. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA. <laughs> Buffalo, New York. The Rams, eight and a half, Steve. Going to lean over on the Rams. A um, little bit concerned Puka is banged up, and that could be a big deal over the course of the season. You know, I'm getting injury reports from the SIC folks, Dr. Chow's crack team, so I'm loving that. Um, and they, that frankly puts me on and off bets sometimes. And here's a case where I tempered my enthusiasm because of that. Totally agree. Sportsinjurycentral.com. The Rams have already racked up some important injuries and their left tackle suspended the first two games. Alaric Jackson. Don't like that. Chargers have the same number. Eight and a half, Steve. Could only lean under on the Chargers. You know, how many times are Herbert and company going to do it to you? I get it that huge upgrade in coaching staff, but um, you know, the quarterback doesn't get to work with the skill position players because of the plantar fasciitis. Could be a slow start for the Chargers this year. I'll lean under. What about, yeah, I, I'm going to lean under on the Chargers as well. I think that there's a little bit too much hype there uh, because of the Harbaugh factor. Patriots, your Patriots, Steve, at four and a half. All right, I am going under four and a half plus 110. Bold prediction, Ross. People are going to get angry because this is, of course, silly. Patriots are going to go winless this year. Patriots are not going to win a game. They are absolutely awful. My buddy who followed, this is his team in Boston, Pastrami, pro better, pro poker player. He has been texting me, imploring me to bet more on the New England Patriots under at all different numbers, under three and a half, four and a half, five and a half, under four and a half plus money. That is a best bet uh, for, for me. That would be my strongest take. The Patriots, 2-15. and 15. Well, is it winless or 2-15? and 15? Well, winless is kind of like the hot take, media, fake, <laughs> fake stuff. I don't really feel they're going to go winless, but it's possible they could go winless. All right, Houston Texans are at 9.5, Steve. Uh, Houston basic strategy says I should fade this team. This is a team that had that, like, the last place schedule. And then, boom, they overachieve. Their rookie quarterback plays great, and everyone jumps on the on the freight train. But my eye test says they're going to be good. And because of that, I'm going to pass. Cleveland at eight and a half? I got to see their quarterback. I got to see how he plays. Watson, I you know, the bookmakers in Vegas say Watson is three points better than Jameis Winston. 
I don't know if he's 0.3 points better. Um, I got to see it first. I pass for now. For the record, I would go under the Patriots four and a half. Texans number seems right. I would actually only lean over to the Texans to get to that 10th win. And Cleveland eight and a half seems right. Carolina's at five and a half, Steve. Now, I know I'm going against some respected people here who are all over Carolina, including saying Carolina's going to make the playoffs. And their total was four and a half. It's up to five and a half. I don't see it. They did not lead last year at any time during the fourth quarter the entire year. They won two games at the buzzer at the end of games. So they could have won zero last year, and now they got to win six. I could only look under. Uh, I'm under on the Carolina Panthers. But look, they, they win four or five games. It's a significant improvement, but you still hit the under. I'm under the five and a half on the Panthers for sure. Falcons are at nine and a half, Steve. They made some moves. Jesse Bates, Matthew Judon, they're not messing around. Yeah, I was going to look to fade the Falcons. I was like, what's this? How, who made the Falcons a 10-win team? Kurt Cousins is worth two wins. I'm like, they're a seven-win team. Now they should win nine. But you know what? Now with the additions to the defense, like you said, and they're sending a message to their players. I want to ask you, Ross, when you see an organization doing that, I would think it would motivate everyone that we're going for it this year. So because of that, I'm, I'm neutral. Yeah, so first of all, I thought they sent a bad message to the players by drafting Penix Jr. with the eighth overall pick. But they've kind of made up for that a little bit. You bring in Jesse Bates, you bring in Judon, you're making it pretty clear to the players that you think you got a chance to win the division and go on a playoff run. I love that. Um, I still think nine and a half is probably the right number. For the Falcons, I I would have a slight lean to the over, but I think that's the right number. How about the Colts at eight and a half, Steve? Was leaning over early in the summer. Do not like what I'm seeing from Anthony Richardson. Now I'm going to lean under. That number's about right to me. Uh, I could only lean under, though, because you're right. There are some Richardson concerns, and health is one of them. All right, Dolphins are at nine and a half. So here's a team. I got nothing on the nine and a half. However, the Dolphins are starting the year banged up, banged up on the defensive line. So here's a team that may well be playing better in October and November than they are to start the season, but nothing on the season win. That number sounds right to me. Cowboys are at nine and a half, Steve. Ooh, I really wanted the under ten and a half. Same as Buffalo. At ten and a half, if we would have done the show a month ago, under... Nine and a half. Hey, the Cowboys have won 12 the last few years. I would look over the nine and a half. I totally agree with everything that you just said. And it does remind me of the same situation as the Bills. Wow, I didn't see the Jets got up to 10 and a half, Steve. So who are the Jets uh, to be 10 and a half? Uh, That's ridiculous. The quarterbacks, when they hit age 40, that aren't named Tom Brady, fall off cliffs oftentimes. I know the defense is supposed to be great. I got to see it's under 10 and a half on the Jets. Come on. I, I'm with you. I'm going under 10 and a half. I, I have them going 10 and seven this year. And I thought that was, you know, I thought that, that was pretty good for me to have them at that number. I, that would be like almost, I don't say best case scenario, but that's on the high end for the Jets. I think under 10 and a half for me as well. Arizona Cardinals are at six and a half. Could only look over. I know it's minus 150 to the over, but um, the the buy sign is blinking on the Arizona card. Strong lean over. That number sounds right to me. They're they're a six, maybe seven win team. What about the Raiders? They're at six and a half right now on DraftKings with the over minus 130 under plus 110. So I'm going to pull an audible here. DraftKings does a great job. They have alternative totals at all these different numbers. And you can get the Raiders under 7.5 minus 160, which is very inexpensive to buy a full game, if you will. So it's 7.5 minus 160. I really like the Raiders under. Um, Our friends at SIC told me, hey, the Raiders were the healthiest team in the NFL last year. Uh, That's a team you typically want to fade because they weren't very good last year, despite all that health, and maybe they won't be as healthy this year. Raiders under. Wow, that's interesting, Steve. I didn't know that. Okay, the Bengals are at 10 and a half. 
Love the last place schedule. Love they get three cupcakes while the rest of the division has to play tough games. Uh, small lean to the over 10 and a half. Still worried. Burrow has to stay healthy. That number seems right to me. Again, tough division there. I mean, those, those are those are not easy division games. I think they'll win 10 or 11 games. The Saints at seven and a half, Steve? Same as Seattle. The Saints are a mediocre team, but they're getting lined at like they're a below average team. And I think they're going to win eight, even nine games. I look over. I think that number's right. They seem about the same to me as the uh, as the Seahawks. They should be seven and a half. Bears at nine and a half. The, oh, wow. Um, under the Bears got all this hype because of their three wide receivers and the Rook quarterback. And I mean, the Bears are suddenly the Packers. I mean, come on. The um, nine and a half bridge too far. Look under. I love the under on the Bears. I, I don't see them winning 10 games at all. That might be my favorite bet. I think, they're, I think they might win eight or nine. They're not getting to 10. Not in the Packers and Lions division. Love the under nine and a half on the Bears. Vikings six and a half. We got two more. Yep. I'll lean over the six and a half for the Vikings. Uh, but the division's so tough just to lean. That number's right to me. Tennessee Titans six and a half. Boy, uh, I've, I've read so many con conflicting things. They're going to throw the ball all over the yard. I don't know if Levis can handle it. I got to see how he plays. I'm going to pass. That would be a pass for me. Don't ever pass on this show next week. It is week one. We will make our official bets every week the entire season. He's at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for tuning in to Even Money. Make sure to also check out the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, Fantasy Feast, and College Draft, all on the DraftKings Network, YouTube, or subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform.